ground meant to grant the giant shoulder. Boots on the ground. Giant shoulder. It's the real meant to grant the giant shoulder. Boots on the ground. It's the real meant to grant the giant shoulder. Boots on the ground. It's the real meant to grant the giant shoulder. Boots on the ground. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Thank y'all for joining me today on the live stream. The subject today is, what is a bar fan? You know, how much does it cost in the Philippines in 2022? Of course, I want to welcome any new viewers and subscribers today. Also, I see... The NTZ crew is on here. The Beach of Life and Jacob Tanjay. Thank y'all so much. WT Secrets to Success vlog. I see you. You're going to be on here Tuesday, man. I'm going to see what you got. It's going to be, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. No, I'm, I'm just joking. So before we get started, you know, I always give the exchange rate is 52.20, which is fantastic. It's a good time to be here in the Philippines, man. Your money's going further. Um, they've got this monkey pox that's going around. I know it's in the United States, uh, Britain, and Australia. They haven't had one case here yet. But I saw on Facebook where a lady was saying the Philippines be prepared for a lockdown because of this monkey pox. But I did read an article about the Omicron variant. It's spiking up over here, 20%, well, 19% rise in cases in Metro Manila. But I kind of expected that because of the, the rallies associated with the elections and stuff over here. If you ever been over here, man, these rallies, man, they're, they're off the chart, man. They got, you know, entertainment it's all kinds of fireworks and it brings out a lot of people and when we were on Bantan Island nobody was even wearing a mask I was shocked I went into the store normally you go into a store you gotta have a mask the employees didn't even have a mask so yeah I was kind of shocked what's going on Dwayne there's Robert Dame my buddy Says diesel in Arizona is five forty nine a gallon. Can't go on this way. It's unsustainable. Price is rising so fast, twenty five percent. When they try to tell us it's only eight percent, a world of lies. I expect another twenty five percent jump this year. Wow, fifty percent. That's crazy. But you know, in America, we've <coughs> we've been fortunate, man, to have those low gas prices for a long time. Now it's catching up with us. And they're not, they don't want to pay you any more money. Anytime they talk about raising the minimum wage, it's a big old deal, man. I'm like, come on, guys. Really, I mean, why do we keep putting these same people in the damn office, though, if we expect change? But anyway, I'm going to read it to you what a bar find is according to Wikipedia. And then we'll go from there. It says a bar fan is a payment made by a customer to the operators of a bar that allows a dancer, hostess, or other employee of the bar to leave work early, usually in order to accompany the customer outside the bar. And from the research that I've been able to gain and from the people I've talked to, because, yeah, I talked to Johns over here. There's something called a non-inclusive bar fan and an inclusive bar fan. He said that the non-inclusive is not a popular. It's not something that's common in the Philippines. You know, usually when you pay that bar fan, it includes sex with the girl, uh, and with the bar girl. Yeah, what's a bar girl? It said, you know, a prostitute, basically. But. She's the entertainer in the bar. 
you know, serving, serving, serving you the girly drinks and all of that. And if you like her enough, you can pay the bar and take her back to your room for some real action. A lot of beautiful women, man. I was online looking. And there's a lot of beautiful women working in those bars. You know, it's, you don't need a college degree to work in those bars. All you got to do really basically is look good. Um, and, you know, be willing uh, to mingle with a variety of men. I know the businesses went up in that Subic area and the Angeles City area since the United States Navy is starting to make their rounds there again. I remember when my son was born, I was in the hospital down in Zamboanga and I was reading. Well, I was watching the news and they said that the United States had decided, this is in 2010, no, 2012, to start doing their rotations again during the Philippines. And yeah, it wasn't long after that, there was a battle group in Manila. I was headed back to the States and I was at the Mall of Asia and I ran into a bunch of young guys. And I was like, man, what y'all doing here? And they say, well, we're on the USS. I forgot what it was. It might have been the Roosevelt. I can't remember. But yeah, that's what that's what it is. And Here's some bar fan prices in the P. Burgos area. That's the red light district in Manila. It's 4,000 to 6,000 pesos. Angley City, Walking Street, 2,000 to 5,000. But I talked to a guy who's living there now. He said it can get as low as 1,000 with a freelancer. He says the farther away from Walking Street, the cheaper it is. Uh, Subic is 2000 to 2500 uh, Cebu City and around Mango Square, that's their red light district, 3000 to 5000 Then Davao is 2500 I don't know about Dumaguete. I, I couldn't find anything about Dumaguete. But I'm sure they've got a lot of freelancers there. And if you look at these prices, man, it can get pretty expensive. You know, these Johns come over here, man, and I'm like, Man, that's a lot of money over here. I mean, 6,000 pesos, that's about $110 or something like that. Just for one night. You know, you got two weeks or whatever it is. So I can see how this is another way that a lot of men go broke over here. They end up spending their money, guys. You got to be careful, you know, so... I'll ask the question, man, you know, is it cheaper to have a bar, girl? I know it's more convenient, you know, you're not tied down and all of that. But, hell, it's expensive, man. You need, you need a regular woman over here, man, unless you're just a multimillionaire and money's no object. It's Kadaro TV. said, morning, bro. Angelese, all bars on Walker Street, 3500 and up. Wow. My suggestion is wait till the club close, meet them outside, save you about fifteen hundred. Yeah, but hell, that's still expensive, Iskandari. Unless you're just gonna, you know, unless that's gonna be your side piece, you do that, you know, once or twice a month. But man, if that's all you're doing over here, that's gonna add. That's gonna add up real quick. But thanks for that tip, man, because. I've never really talked about this. I did a video on prostitution, but not bar girls because uh, prostitution over here. Of course, the pandemic put a whammy on the prostitution everywhere, especially here. And, you know, it was going pretty cheap here. A woman had got busted in Elo, Elo City uh, having sex with a guy in the park. And it was, she told the police... She was charging 200 pesos. When I was down in Zambonga City, you could get it for 300. 300 to 500 pesos. These are freelancers, though. Hey, Will Sutton, he said, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Kevin Boheme, I guess it says, remember, you're paying them to leave afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, they say that the, the inclusive of sex 
is the best way to go because that way when it's over with she can't ask for more money you've already paid the money up front but they said there's a drawback to that too where you've already paid the money then you get back to the hotel and she says she's got a headache because she's got to go home and take care of the family and they say that happens a lot uh joshua mason says i wouldn't pay 3500 for an american girl yeah i know i'm saying like wow um I had no idea really that it was that expensive. I'm so glad I'm a Joe, man. I don't know. That's got to be benefits to being a John. You know, is any Johns on here? Give us your two cents, man. You're like, how are you avoiding this? Is what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> Haitian government said, I like me some freelancers. Yeah, even if you having a freelancer, hell, what, what, a thousand pesos? Just say, well, that ain't be too bad. If you do it every other day, that's 15,000 pesos per month. And I uh, see, you got to put that in your budget, guys. You know, because people always ask me, you know, can can I live off of $1,000 per month? Well, there it is. A third of that is going to go to a woman uh, unless, you know, she's living with you. Hey, Yusuf. Omar Habib says, American girl is too chunky with a big gut, loaded with tattoos, smokes, and thinks she's a queen. Yeah. Um, I'd have to pass on that, too. Moochie T says, Joshua Mason, that is pesos, not dollars. So $3,500 is a lot. It's like less than $70, but, man, that's a lot of money over here. I mean, it really is. Hey, Michael Einstein, good morning. Thanks for that super chat. I'm going to need to talk to you, too, about my COVID insurance to get back in here. I'll send you an email because I'm getting ready to do my visa run, and I'm going to need that COVID to get back in. Hey, NJ Tour uh, Sabu, he said we're watching with Sydney. Hey, Sydney, I'm going to call you after this is over, but I did it that way because it's going to be cheaper for you, Sydney. If you... If I'd have got it and then okay, it was gonna cost eighty dollars, then I was gonna to have to send it to you. That's another eighty dollars. You don't want to do that. Now it's real simple. Just send it to yourself, okay? And I won't go into any details, but after this is over, if you need me to uh help you, I will. Hey, Jeff Small. I forgot NJ Tours. This is our buddy John. If anybody's in uh in and around Cebu or anybody. I did a video with him. He's a bodyguard, chauffeur, tour guide, you know, just all around good guy. He does a lot. If um, you need his services, put your information up there, NJ Tour, your phone and contact information. I'll put it on the screen because he's a good guy. Mo says, hey, Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad to be a Joe, man. Now that I saw these prices, I'm like, man, that's expensive, man. I don't know if I could afford that coming over here. I, I'd have to be like the Haitian gunman, man. I'd have to go freelance, and I guess those aren't the probably aren't the cleanest and probably aren't the nicest looking because I guess you get what you pay for. I know when I lived in Cebu, I should always go to... Um, uh Robinson Mall, the old Robinson Mall around by Osmin Osminius Muente Osminius Circle. And there was a coffee shop right around from there. And right across was one of those bars, man. I just sit there and drink my coffee and I see them coming in and out with um these guys, man. And I was like, man, but I didn't think it was that expensive. Uh, Iskandari TV says, so sad to see, man. I was there, and I saw so many guys looking broke down from going to those clubs every night. Express in Angeli City look like the life has been sucked out of them. Wow. Yeah, man. It's a different type of expat over there. You know, they say that Angeli City will chew you up and spit you out, man, if you spend too much time over there. I've never been to Angeli City. 
I've been to Manila, though. Jeff Small says $100 for one night of guaranteed action is better than spending $300 for an American with no guarantees for a girl with attitude. Yeah, I agree with you, Jeff, but I'm saying that can get expensive real quick, man. Um, I mean, that's a lot of money over here. Okay, Cully Branson says Michael Witt insurance was only 25 to get here. Uh, now, does that include enough COVID? Put that information up here, uh, Cully. He says, uh, the Beach of Life says, Top Chef Strange is $700. Wow, plus. I asked a friend. Yeah, so I guess if you look at it like that, you're getting a bargain over here like you are everything else. But man, you're talking about paying 6,000 pesos a night? Uh, Charles Shell said, I just got back from Guam. Guam. A flight from New York to Guam is about 20 hours. I'm going to fly over to Guam for a couple of days and visit some friends and, you know, just kick around over there and come on back. Cos Boy says, hey, Cal, question. What would be the cost being a Joe, taking a date out to dinner, drinks, then back to your hotel room? The hotel room is already paid for, so that cost is washed. Oh, hell. If you were here in San Carlos City, man, I would say about $25. And I'm talking about big portions. You couldn't eat it all. That's a fact. Food is pretty cheap over here. Hey, Jonathan Stanley, thanks for that super chat. He said, shipmates, appreciate your knowledge and boots on the ground perspective. I'm Navy as well, deployed in 05. Next tour will be your way. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Jonathan, man. I appreciate it. Matthew, thanks for that super chat. He said, in Columbia, and there you can get a woman that needs a PT sugar, a part-time sugar daddy, and wants a job once a week and get a good rate for tuition assistance for the university. Thanks, uh, Larry, for that super sticker. But yeah, it can get pretty expensive over here, and I had no idea um, that it would run so high. But if you're in Cebu, you go around Man Mango Square. I'm going to tell you the truth, guys. Right after the typhoon hit, remember I was in Cebu uh, and the typhoon hit. I'm standing out in front of the condo building with another guy. We're just talking, and we see these two guys come out, and they're saying, what time does the bar open? These guys was going to the bar, man. It wasn't 12 o'clock yet. The day after the typhoon, man. I don't know what, what it was going on. I'm like, there must be some, some hell of a beautiful women down there. David Call says, I'm a retired Navy CB. First went to Subic in the 80s. Plan on going back at the end of the year. Yeah, I couldn't find the name of the red light district in Subic. But they said it's 2,500. I know they're getting good business, man, because the Navy's back around. The valve. But I couldn't find anything on Dumaguete, which is kind of crazy because I know for a fact if you go there when it gets dark, somewhere around 630 all the way until the next morning, you're going to see, you go out in front of that Why Not bar right across on the boulevard, they're going to just be sitting there. And you know they're freelancers, to be honest with you. <laughs> Brandon said, damn, Cal, $70 is cheap to all of us here in the USA. Man, you could, for $3,500, you, you, man, that's, that's a whole month over here for a regular woman. And she's 24-7. Hey, Andre Warren, he said, just checking in from, from Minnesota. Because, you know, them women, you know, then you mix in. Because remember, guys, y'all drinking, too. You just ain't screwing. You drinking, then the girly drinks. You got to eat. Man, come on, guys. Y'all got big money doing that. 
I mean, really, that's why I'm a Joe, man. I'm a Joe till I die. Uh, you know, because I don't have to pay all that advanced money because, hell, if you're going to be a John for the rest of your life, man, you, well, you know, John's earn more money than Joe's anyway on average because most John's have a college degree. They own their own home and they got money in the bank. So I guess you're going to need all of that. Yeah, I guess you're going to need all of that because, man, I was shocked when I looked these prices up. And I got to talking to some guys who, some subscribers of mine, they're in Angley City now. He said, yeah, you can get it for 1000 but you get what you pay for. You know, she might not be the cleanest woman. And because she's only a 1000 you know, you're going to be, you got to wait your turn and all of that. And I don't know, man. I think I'm going to stick with the Joe situation. It's Sam Champion on here. Hey, y'all going to be shocked when I do this next. I'm going to do an update on the tiny house in the morning. You're going to be shocked. The windows are in. Uh, the lights are in. The electrician's done. The toilet, the bathroom is finished. The only thing really now is I'm going to have to get this air conditioned because that's the only space that's open. I don't want something flying in. David Qualls says I was with the NMCB in Gulfport in the 90s. I was on the USS John F. Kennedy, man, and we used to go to places. They had to screen the ship before we could pull in because they said, can you handle 6,000 men that's going to get drunk, that's going to, you know, haunt and horny. You know what I'm saying? Because we used to tear up places, man. But we couldn't tear up Brazil. We went to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for five days and four nights, man. Brazil can take a punch. Rio can take a punch, man. You put 6,000 men. We spent, that isn't 1983, 1983 dollars. This is real dollars. Because the dollar now versus the dollar in 1983 is about 39 cents. I looked it up. We spent 20 million U.S. dollars five days and four nights, man. <laughs> Uh, the beast of life says, I'll pay extra for a queen downstairs. I like shiny clean. Man. Uh, Mark Hoover said, this is scaring me. Well, why if you do if you stay away from that area? I mean, I wanted to talk about this giant situation because we very seldom address it. But a lot of my viewers and subscribers are giants. I just want to know how you can afford it. How can you afford those prices? And how often? Uh, it's Kanari TV says, learn to have game, use your mouthpiece to get a girl. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of these guys, you know, they want, they want the bar fine. They want to pay to play like that. Because you got to pay to play anyway. I think now that I looked up these prices, I'm like, well, hell, I'm doing pretty damn good. I saw where you had two Iskandari. I hope your wife's not looking. You had two women up there. How did how much did that cost you? Sam Chapman says the smoke mount model. Good to hear from you, Smokey. We were on standby. The storm went around where I live, but was in the era. Nathan White said hello from Trace. Uh, how you pronounce that, Nathan? As a matter of fact, uh, Iskandari TV said he was ready to pick you up. If this is the same Nathan, he said he hasn't heard from you. Get in contact with him. If you want to hook up, there's, there's some people up there. Uh, you, you're welcome, Jeff, man. I just try to share my experience, strength, and hope over here. I pay. I, I did the long-term payment plan with women over here because 
You're going to pay either way it goes. I did the long term. I took out the Filipino mortgage. It's a lot cheaper, man. What's up, Dre Diggity? Hey, Jeff Small, thanks for that super sticker. That's my buddy, Timothy Bright. Hey, Timothy Bright, good to hear from you, man. Thanks for that email you sent the other day. And thanks for the super chat. He says, Honey Nut Cheerios, it's been months since I logged on. Just saying hello, Cal, and everyone. I just got my passport today. Wow. I may be, I may go to the Philippines in wintertime. Yeah, man, and uh, congratulations on your, your health situation, man. I know you told me you're getting a lot better. That would be a good time to come. I don't know if anybody's ever been here during the holidays, but from September to, to the new year, it's the holiday season in the Philippines. They start celebrating Christmas in September. Frank Ornelas, I hope I pronounced that right. He says, when I was in the United States Navy in 1976, my ship went to the Philippines. It cost $5 for a long time. That's when the aircraft carriers were out to sea. <laughs> yeah. That was a long time ago, man. Oh, uh, Iskandavi said that they're nurses. I've known them for 10 years. They're girls, yeah. Hell, they look kind of rough, though, man, the pictures you sent me. <laughs> I was like, well, hell, these, these must be some. Uh, pretty tough nurses. Cully Bronson says, I'm Joe Neville John. Yeah, I'm with you there, Cully. I'm going to have to be with you on that. The Drake Diggy Show said, finally took your advice and started making these videos again. Yeah, man, just, you know, make the videos. You get better every video you make, believe it or not. A.C. King says, I don't begrudge anybody. They're fun, but I have never acquired a taste for buying fresh. I tried it, never felt comfortable with it. Guess I'm just a Joe by nature. That's me too, but when you're in the Navy and you're out to sea for, man, the, the longest I was ever out to sea was 73 days. And it is almost it almost comes natural after that. Because once I got out of the Navy, I wasn't comfortable with it either. But when you're in the Navy and you go those long stretches like that, man, you need that. It's Kandab TV says, I highly doubt that, bro. None of them look rough. Guess you need to see them in person. Yeah, they had a little extra meat on them, in my opinion. But, you know, everybody's got their own. I'm just messing with you, really. But everybody's got their own taste. I kind of like a little slim, thick. Uh, Robert Dame said, bar fans are for guys who have no game. I'd rather feel sorry for them, to be honest. They get my sincere sympathy to be so damn hard up. I tell you, it gets expensive, man. I was doing the math. I said, well, hell, 6,000 pesos per day. That's the top of the line. But let's just go to low row. Let's go to low uh, on the totem pole, 2,000. That would be 40 U.S. dollars per day, 30 days. That's $1,200. That's 60,000 pesos per month. Cut that in half because you're going to do that every other day. Right, and you're looking at thirty thousand pesos per month, man. That's just your pussy bill, man. It's a lot. Uh, so uh, the Dre Diggy show says, so what have I been missing, man? I tell you what, it's a lot of guys coming over here, and I want to give a shout out to my buddy Philip Cooper. He's been with me, man, following my vlog since I had like five hundred subscribers or something and he travels all around him and his him his wife and their daughter they got a 16 year old daughter uh and he finally made it to san carlos city they're going they're on their way to baraka now he's been doing a lot of traveling they came here man it's like i knew the guys it's like i've been knowing him uh my whole life it's and it's like that when guys get here because we go back and forth on this on these live streams and stuff and you get to the point, like, you know, I'm like, 
beats of, of life. When he gets here, it's going to be like I know him. Mo, Mark White when he was here. You know, Franz, Sydney. It seems like I know you guys already, and I really don't. But when you get here, and we ate at Marwani last night, man, and they were impressed again. They were shocked at the portions, guys. Listen, I don't care what nobody said. The food at Marwani is the best in the Philippines, and the portions. You can't beat it. It's too much. Too much food. The prices. I mean, we fed eight people last night. Just so much food, man. It wasn't even $60. I mean, really. And then, you know, we gave him a tip. We gave him a 10% tip, which the guy was just so happy. Yeah, yeah. That's just the that's just the pussy bill, beat your life. You're right. What about the liquor, the food, and all? You got to have somewhere to take the girl. Man, you guys got more, a lot more money than uh <laughs> than I do. Frank says I have game. My best pickup line is how much. <laughs> Andre Warren says, "Hey, C. King, I feel the same way. At least I at least want the woman to like me." Uh, and yeah, a lot of times when you come over here, though. It happened so fast because of the unspoken agreement that, you know, you're going to have a spark there, but I don't know if the woman really is going to like you right away. There's going to be something that she likes in order to lay down with you. But, you know, I don't know if what kind of feelings uh you're really going to have. That, that takes a little time over here. Uh, Haitian government says, Cal, why you never talk about those awkward latrine outhouses out in the country? Have you ever been in a tight situation? Yeah, the real nitty gritty. Absolutely. And I laugh about it all the time because uh, I was in DeVal one time. DeVal, Del Norte, DeVal, Del Sur. I can't remember which one, but it was a dangerous place. I didn't even know it. And the young lady, her family asked me, you know, invite me to dinner. So I said, okay, man, it's something I ate. And I was like, I got to use the restroom. Well, when I went in there, man, okay, it was, they just had like a hole in the floor with ceramic around it, you know. And I was like, because, you know, they squat over here. But I couldn't figure it out in my mind. So I took my clothes off. I laid down on my back and used the toilet, man. It was so funny, even when I think about it today, because when I got up, the back of my pants was wet. I didn't even know it, though. I didn't know it till they dropped me off in my hotel room. I was so embarrassed because they saw it. But I didn't know how to use the damn thing. I'm like, how in the world am I supposed to use this hole in the ground? So I just laid on my back. I put my, you know, my butt over the hole and just lay down and use it, man. That was crazy. <laughs> Dude says, bar fans kind of suck in the Philippines because you pay it all up front. Yeah, that, that can be good, though, because it kind of saves you from that hassle of, well, her trying to ask you for more. But there's another side to that, too, where the lady – may not perform up to par where well, you've already paid for it already. But in Thailand, it's a little different from what I was reading. The bar fan is low, then you negotiate with the girl. Muchi Chi says, I can't imagine sleeping with a different woman every other day. Guess we're all wired differently. I need intimacy and can't get it from someone that sleeps with different folks all the time. Yeah, it's a, it's a different, that John is a different character, man. Uh, he is. The John's a different character. Yeah, man, that, that was funny, man. I mean, really, even to this day, it's like, <laughs> yeah, Deval is safe. But I mean, I was either north of Deval, way where I wasn't supposed to be, away from the city. You know, just like Zamboanga is in Zamb. They have a Zamboanga del Sur which is the south part of the 
Zamboanga region. Then they have a Zamboanga del Norte, which is north. But yeah, it is safe. Uh, it was funny, man. I ain't going to lie. I laid flat on my back to use the toilet. I didn't know if Iskandar was my first time encountering something like that. You're supposed to squat, but hell, I didn't know. Uh, Clarence 007 says, I always plan to spend 5000 a week. That's why bar fans don't bother me. Wow. Man, well, yeah, like I said, you know, when you come, you know, when you come in for two weeks, some, some guys, they got more money than others, and money's no object. Man, you know how much, that, how, my guess how, that I'm building this $5,000. Hey, Hollywood, baby, thanks for checking in, man. It's my favorite farming up from Atlanta, man. Every time I ride through Atlanta, I get caught in that traffic. I didn't realize Atlanta traffic was so bad. I was taking my kids. Well, the two times we went to Florida, I go through Atlanta, man. It's usually a baseball game or something going on. Because that's usually when we go down and, man, traffic's so terrible. He said, hey, brother, Cal finally catching the live stream tonight. Keep living my dreams, brother. Oh, man. Uh, somebody else is going to be living dreams because this guest house is just about done. All I really have to do is um, furnish it now. AC King says, to be honest, even a decent girlfriend, quality woman is going to want you to have money to spend on them. The difference is it's not requirement, and they don't ask for it up front. Yeah, and then, like the guy said, Moochie T said, there is some intimacy there. And, you know, she's the same woman, and I'm like that too, man. I can't. Maybe that's why I'm a, I've always been a one-woman man, to be honest with you. Hey, the Papa Smurf, the OG, says, hello, Sunshine Shoulders from Manhattan. Good to see your channel growing. I remember when you first started, I missed the Philippines. I stay in Boracay and park my plane at Clark Airport. Man, I tell you, that's a great plan. If I could afford it, I'd stay in Boracay 24-7. I wouldn't go anywhere else. Either Boracay or Peng Lao Bahal, either one. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to save my money, and I'm going to spend one month on an island somewhere, Bentayan Island somewhere, because I'm going to tell you, man, it's so beautiful, it's so quiet in these places. It's just so much to do. A week is not enough, man. But that's all my money can stand is a week. And most Joes like me, you come to Baraka, that's all we can really stand. But I'm going to save my money, man. I'd love to um, stay on one of those islands for, for just one whole month. And soak it all in. David Starr says, is it normal for a guy to date two or more women at once? Is it culturally accepted or not? Not really culturally accepted. Can you do it? Yeah, you, you can do it. I did it because they're going to think, well, I'm going to win, win him out. Because the prize, the stakes are so high. But it's not culturally accepted. But they're going to go along with it because, you know, especially if you're a decent man, your hygiene is good, you got good money, your character. Because I did it. Auntie Perrick says, so tell me, are these bar girls fan or what? Absolutely. Man, all you got to do is go on YouTube. Man, and see some of them swimming parties they having up there in Angley City. And you got to understand, they wouldn't be bar girls if they wasn't beautiful. You have, you're going to uh, justify charging in Angley City is 2,000 to 5,000 pesos. You have to be fine, man. Yeah, they, there's some fine-ass women, you know, on the outside. Let's face it. But, see, my man starts messing with me. And I started wondering who she was with before. And, you know, I started just thinking some crazy stuff. And it won't let me, it won't let me perform, man, on something like that. 
Gary Courtney says, Doug Carr, check and see if they put PTSD in your problems list in your VA medical records. And did the VA give you medicine for your PTSD? He says, hey, fellas, a girlfriend, wife costs way more money in the long run and lots more to deal with. Well, I don't know. What do you mean the long run? If you're a man and you're a Joe, you got to keep paying. You got to keep spending. It's never free, Brandon. And none of it's free, but it's never free. So I guess, you know, it, it's like, you know, going to the ATM, I guess. You know, if you ain't got nothing in there, you don't have nothing coming out. But at least if you get broke and waiting for your check, your woman's still right there with you. Uh, Rob Fisher says, I've not seen Buck, what happened to him? Maybe he's in love. You know, Anthony, the guy who got married, man, hooked Buck up with a beautiful woman, man. And sometimes that happens. Guys disappear when they get the woman. You know. Uh, it's Gandhi TV. He said, yes, Lord, they are fine as hell. I seen some, man, in Mango Square, man. It's just unbelievable. You be like, you be tempted, man. But I know what's going to happen to me. I'm not going to be able to really perform i can't perform on the clock i gotta be comfortable i'm gonna tell you even when me and marilyn was together when we first got together i, I was, could perform but she was like well what's taking you so long to get an orgasm i'm like because i'm not really comfortable yet and now hell she's like well, what why you why is it why are you coming so quick <laughs> Uh, James Wright said, hey, Calvin, wow, man, I can't believe I caught a live stream. I watch your videos all the time. We've been able to connect a couple of times. But this hamster wheel is old now, so look out for me soon. Yeah, the hamster wheel is a beast, man. It is. Um, and I'm not lying. That hamster wheel, that hamster wheel does, does not play. And the older you get, the more it's, the faster it speeds up dj lord buck there's nothing good in life is free yeah you gotta pay for it hey jerome morgan what's going on are you no no i think it's jerome smart is here in the philippines are you here jerome or was it jerome smart i can't remember oh he said that's what i mean brother yeah that's what i'm saying i it's expensive man but yeah, Buck, Buck came here. Buck was here. I got a video of him doing the electric slide. Buck, Iskandari TV, Anthony, the guy that got married, and some other guy. I should have been there. But, yeah, he was there. Yeah, Buck came. So I can give him credit for that, man. And every... A lot of guys who have come to see me, they were already extended. They thought they were going to be here. Man, you can't come here for the first time in the Philippines. If you got the money and you got the time, 30 days ain't going to get it. You're going to extend. That's, I mean, that's a guarantee. Uh, Iskandar TV says, you're not on clock. They will stay with you until one the next day. Oh, man. It's Kandari TV, man. You talking like you're a veteran, man. Come on, give us some of them. Give us the nitty-gritty, man. He said not all the girlfriends uh, stick around when the money's gone. Well, I mean, they can wait a few days is what I'm saying. Because a lot of guys here that I meet, they're, they're, a lot of times they'll run out of their uh, their pension. And they, you know, may borrow, try to borrow some money or something and hold on to the end of the month. Usually that last week is tough for a lot of us. Timothy Bright says, <laughs> he said, why you come so fast? Yeah, it used to be what's taking you so long. But, you know, once I get comfortable. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, that's Jerome Smart then. He's here. Sorry. So, uh, Iskandari TV, you saw Buck, right? 
And Buck is big, man. I didn't realize Buck was so big. I mean, Buck is really big, man. I didn't realize that because, um, you know, he was always sitting down. We usually just saw this part of him. He just didn't look like a big guy. And Buck is big. Buck is looking like he's he's over 300 pounds. But he was moving on the dance floor, though. He said, trying to build myself up for us like you. He said, it's 5,000. What, what are you talking about, Superstar Jones? Now, he says he budgets $5,000 per week for, um, that's his pussy bill over here. I'm like, man, you, you, I'm, if you can verify that, you're going to be in my Hall of Fame here. He said, Buck's cool. We had a good time. Yeah, Buck looks like he's, he's a cool guy. I don't know. He, it's a lot of guys that aren't on here anymore, man. You know, I, I miss a lot of them too, and I don't understand it. But, you know, people have their own lives and stuff. The one says, bro, Calvin, if you get your hygiene, what do you mean? Filipinos love a man that has good hygiene. They're going to give you the sniff test. They're going to sniff up on you even after you've been together. They just do that, man. I remember the first time a woman did that to me. And Dre Diggy says, I want to get off the hamster wheel. I need the support of the community. Yeah, man, that hamster wheel, boy. And by the time you realize you own it, it's too late. It's got your butt, man. You got all them bills, you know, that new car payment. One of my subscribers bought a brand new Nissan truck because his wife, she liked it. They rented it. She liked it. He went out and bought it. I said, man, don't you know that's going to keep you on the hamster wheel seven more years, man, but James Wright says, you, you do a lot of videos on many reasons to move there. Can you speak on any reasons not to move to the Philippines? I'm so curious to find out the negative if there is one. I'm sure the good outweigh the bad. Yeah, I did a video called The Dark Side of the Philippines. It's really one of my most popular videos in the long run. I think it's, it's got over 200,000 views. And some people, and what I did, James, was I talked about why some people bypass the Philippines as a retirement destination and for reasons like their insurance is not valid over here so you realize you know you don't worked all those years on your job or you've got your medicare and it's no good over here so you know a lot of people say no nah, you know it's that's a deal breaker there a lot of people say well i can't own land here I, you know who wants to build a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house on land that I don't own. And then people will say stuff like, the cost of living, believe it or not, is one reason why they go. Because you hear a lot of stuff, James, about people living on a thousand. Can you live on a thousand dollars per month in the Philippines? Of course you can. But these people, when they get here and they add it all up, the type of lifestyle that they're wanting over here, it's usually somewhere around 2000 per month. And they say, well, I've got better choices or other choices than the Philippines. Just things like that, man. You know, you can't own a business over here. Only 40%. You got to have a 60% ghost Filipino partner. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a good video, man. But that's a lot of reason that some people don't choose to come here. Uh, Bucci T says, we hang with the big boys, Calvin. Good thing you don't need so much money to have fun. Yeah, entry point is low, so most guys can afford to have fun. Yeah, uh, you certainly don't need 5000 per week over here, Bucci T. And somebody made a comment on my video. He said the Philippines, in his opinion, is slowly but surely not becoming a low-budget destination. No, it's got a long way to go. That won't happen in our lifetime. It's going to be low 
for Westerners from here on out to, to you to Jesus comes home. You can mark my word on that because you've got 110 million people here. There's no way they can make this a regular cost tourist destination. The economy is totally different. You're not going to kill off 110 people for eight to just to make 8 million people happy, which is what the amount of tourists that come here on a good, um, in a good year. Al Fitz said, I'm still driving a 2000 Honda Accord trying to get off the hamster wheel. I don't blame you. Something clicked in my mind. I'm telling you, man, years ago, I started buying my cars cash. You know, I paid 5000 for a nice used car and be done with it. Those loans and all of that. Man, the last car that I had before I came to the Philippines, man, I had a um, Chrysler Sebring convertible that I had bought from this guy. See, I always bet the owners. I don't buy cars unless they're coming from the rich neighborhood. I do that. I've never, I mean, I'm smart enough to know that. First of all, they take good care of their cars. They got all the maintenance records and all that, and they're not hurting for money. So I bought this car, man. I, I can't remember what I paid for, 2800 or something. It was beautiful, man. It had the boot on the back, you know, when you let the top down. You know, and I gave it to my daughter, man, because within one month, she destroyed it. But, yeah, I, I paid cash for my cars. I mean, a long, starting in maybe at least 10 years ago, I knew that. Hey, John Gomez, what's going on? Have you sold that condominium? He's got a condominium for sale in the DR. Thanks, Doug Carr. He says, um, thumbs up if you haven't already, guys. Yeah. He said, does a Vaughn fan cost more in Manila than Cebu? Or is it all the same? No. Cost more in Manila. Everything costs more in Manila. According to the Philippine red dot is 4,000 to 6,000 pesos as a bar fan in Manila. Cebu is 3,000 to 5,000. But, you know, there's always freelancers. And then it's like, how low can you go? You can go around the squatters area where, the, you know, some decent looking women, man, and get it for 300 to 500 pesos. Uh, Brian H. says, if you take airfare out of the question, a short-term visit budget of about 125 a day should cover everything. Absolutely. Food, lodging, a bit of fun, unless you are in the bar scene. Absolutely. You know, the Philippines keeps, or every probably, every department of tourism keeps some, some, some records. Here, they spend an average of $130 per day, which is a lot of money to spend here. I don't know what you could spend it on here. Unless they're including your hotel stay in that. Otherwise, I'm like, what could you spend $130 per day on unless it's, I don't know what you could do over here. Unless you're buying souvenirs and stuff like that. Hey, what's going on, Vince? Uh, I'm inviting Vince Lawson. He's here right now for dinner tonight. We got something special for you, Vince. Come on over here by yourself or with a date. I was right on the corner of Onyx and uh, what's the street you live on? Onyx and I, do you live in that big fancy building right on the corner? Is that where you're living? Oh, okay, he's got a buyer. That's good. That's good stuff, John. He said, if you have the time and want to learn. How to do your what? I don't I don't understand. How to do your clay? What? Oh, I guess he's talking about claim. Hey Calvin, I have about 250000 plus a monthly salary of about 2000 Sometimes when I listen to some of your vlogs, it seems like that is not enough these days. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm always I'm a promoter of the low cost lifestyle over in the Philippines. This is a working man's paradise. If you've got that kind of money, man, you would live good over here with plenty to spare. You wouldn't even have to touch the 250000 
just add the interest to the 2000 man and you're straight oh this guy's selling something i can get him off of here yeah no no i don't know what video you was talking about man no really i promote the philippines as a working man's paradise everybody else is priced us out this isn't this isn't even thailand man it's cheaper uh believe it or not yeah this guy had to hey to beat your life that it's that time i got rid of him he's selling him we're selling investments or something Oh, uh, James Wright says, I heard you say before it may be a good idea to maybe live in the area of your girlfriend or wife. Why is that so important? Is it because she herself may not be familiar with another part of the Philippines? That's one reason, James, but you don't want to take her away from her support system. Family is very important over here. And you don't know, it's going to benefit you to make her, keep her happy. Philip Cooper, her last night, He's been traveling all around. He said, Calvin, to be honest with you, he said, I love Dumaguete. He said, but I didn't want to take my wife away from her family and where she grew up. And, you know, that's the way I look at it, man. You're going to be two peas out of a pie, man. You're both going to be lost out here in the wilderness. And believe it or not, Filipinas, they act bashful, man, around other Filipinas. When you take her somewhere she's not familiar with, she'll make you mad, man. She don't want to ask directions, you know, and, and you can't speak the language, you know. So, yeah, I would keep her near her support system because it's going to keep her happy. You don't want an unhappy Filipina, man. Uh, Patrick Glenn, and this might be something Ms. Kandari can ha help you with. He said, does anyone in the chat know how much the bar fan is at Pegasus or Air Force One Club? Uh, Hyde in the Shadow says, South America has cheaper places to live and better food, but the women are not as focused on a relationship like the fields. I have to take your word on that because I haven't lived in South America, but I tell you, it has to be pretty damn cheap. But remember... That's not the only thing that attracts people to the Philippines, man. It's beautiful here. Number one. Number two, you're welcome. You're genuinely welcome here. The people speak English. You don't have to try to learn uh, another language if you don't want to. There's enough people here. It's sufficient. Even though 95% of them speak their language on a daily basis, if you really need to talk to them, they can understand you. But it's a lot of the Philippines uh, checks the box. There's an apartment right here in San Carlos City that I personally would live in if I was single. It's less than $100 per month. Man. It's clean. It's in a clean area. It's just like a studio, a big studio. You walk up the steps. The bottom is your storage area for your motorcycle. I mean, it's really nice, man. It's just really, I mean, you got to go pretty low over here. And then you got to throw in the women on top. You got to see, that's a, that's a hell of icing to throw on top over here. Uh, Hyatt Michelle said, agree, Cal, in South America, you might have a higher chance of getting murdered for money. Yeah, something like that. See, Filipinos, they leave you alone. But right underneath that surface, see, if you don't mind your own business, if you come over here and you get out of your lane, they can get dangerous over here, too. But more than likely, they're very hospitable. They want you here. And as long as you stay in your lane, you don't have anything to worry about. They're not targeting us over here, man. I'm telling you, I've been over here on and off for 13 years. In certain places around the world, they target you.
Yeah, explain how they are ripoffs so we know. What's he talking about? What are you talking about, Iskandar? Uh, cycling. Oh, okay. He's talking about VA Insider. He said, I have a friend that's still paying then after a year. He was awarded 90%. Oh, okay. Uh, Fisher Johnson said, also in South America, you can get drugs or robbed. And one thing I can tell you, okay, remember there was a, a black guy, black American, was it last year or a year before, was killed over in Colombia. He went over there and was buying a building and all that with all that kind of money, right? Over here, you can spend that kind of money and it won't get no attention, really. You know, because the people that you're dealing with, they're going to have that kind of money. The masses don't even see that you got that kind of money, but you can spend that kind of money and you don't have anything to worry about. I would never blame him for his own death. But man, when you're going over there with that kind of money like that, cash money like that, I think it was 250000 or something like that, man, that's going to put you in, they'll put you in jeopardy in the United States. Supposedly the richest nation on the planet. Hell. You go over there with 250000 you may not make it out alive. Gary Courtney said, VA claims inside of, charges you five times on your back pay. Wow. And you have to do all the work. Why well, pay them? My lawyer only charged 20% of my back pay. No money up front. That's usually how it works. But some guys, you know, they, they want that money, man. And, you know, they say, well, what well, helps? Five times, that would be 100% of your back pay. If, if you got charged 20%. Uh, <clears throat> James Wright said, okay, I've never heard anyone mention Caloocan City, Philippines. What do you know about this area? I want the tropical beach life, tiki bar lifestyle, 40% of my time. Iskandari can tell you about that. Now, that's up by Manila. A lot of my Filipino subscribers are from up there. I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, he uh, he lives up that way. He can tell you. Help him out. It's going to die on this Kalukin city. Muchi T says, Calvin, that brother was killed when I was actually in that city. It was in Barank Barranquilla. There's not much tourism in that city. Yeah, he, uh, I would never blame him. He made a lot of mistakes, though. And it cost him his life, man, in a place like Colombia. Papa Smurf, the OG, says, I've been to the Philippines five times. Never had any issues. The food and the people are very nice. Never insult their culture. I would leave New York City. I retired. I moved to the Philippines in no time. Yeah, that, that's one thing that you you have to – that has to play somewhere up here with everybody thinking about relocating to another country. Am I welcome there? And in the Philippines, I can say that unequivocally. You're welcome here. But you just better mind your own business, man, and stay in your lane. Don't look down at, on Filipinos, man. You're in their country. You can't bring, bring, bring that type of mindset over here. That's a problem over here, man. At the end of the day, we're all human beings. Oh, wow. He said they still haven't found Timothy Reed's murderers, man. I don't know if they will. And see, that happens over here. If you mess around with the wrong people, you know, you, you piss them off, using in politics, drugs, something like that, land disputes, man. The, the killers will never get caught over here, guys. You know, just come over here and be a decent human being, and you're not going to have anything to worry about. You start going places and doing stuff you ain't got no business doing, thinking you are still at home, they got something for you over here. Uh, w Secrets to Success Vlogs, and yeah, he was opening up a restaurant in Columbia and was from Atlanta, Georgia. The word is, he was set up by his girlfriend there. I heard that too. Yeah, he said this is in Manila. I knew it was in Metro Manila 
somewhere around there. But if you're looking for tiki bars and you want that tropical beach life 40% of the time, hell, I would move somewhere, Bahal, somewhere around uh, Caddy Clan, which is the island over from Barakai. It's so many places you could do that. Even in Bantayan Island, they had a, a nightlife on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's dicey anyway. He, Amuchi T says investing in any foreign country is dicey, especially in places where there's mafia activity and state institutions are compromised. See, over here, that, that's one thing. I, I did a video a long time ago, mind your own business, meaning I would not open a business over here unless it was something like a bar or something like that. And then you're going to, this in my opinion, you're going to start, you're going to invite in trouble now. When people, when the Filipinos can see you, because see, we're invisible, really. It's too much going on in their life over here, really, for the Filipino to pay too much attention to you. So we're invisible to him. He's going to see you when you're walking down toward each other. But five seconds after you passed him, he's forgotten about you. He's thinking about getting something for dinner, putting food on the table, roof over his house, you know, taking care of his family and all of that. But when you start opening up businesses, you know, brick and mortar businesses, lending money, you know, just doing stuff like that, they can see you now. You know, I always remind people, there was a, an American guy. He opened up a successful cookie business, right, over here. And the Filipinos saw him, and they killed him. They robbed him and didn't touch his <clears throat> wife. They waited. He was, You know, what he would do, he'd give his cookies on consignment to the businesses. Then he'd go around and collect the money. Well, they, well, they saw him. They knew what day he did that. And he had like 250000 only $5,000, but that's a fortune over here. And they gunned him down and killed him, man. And they didn't touch his wife. And that's just the type of risk you take. Why bring that risk on yourself? If you don't have enough money, I'm not discouraging you. I can't tell you what to do. I'm just saying this is what happens when you have successful businesses over here, depending on what type of business it is. You can only own 40% of it legally anyhow. He says no beach and no tiki bars in Kalukin. See, this this is he's from the Philippines. RLVRV. Thank you for that. But yeah, I um I wouldn't suggest you come over. I didn't come over here to work. Let me keep it on myself. Because you can do whatever you want to do. You you grown men. If you think you got a business idea that's going to work for you over here, first of all, you don't know how they do business over here. You don't know business law. You know, it's just going to, you're on an uphill climb, guys. And then you start competing with the locals. Every dollar, you, every peso you earn is a peso you're taking from them, the way I look at it. And some people don't, um, don't think too kindly of that over here. Auntie uh, Craig said, man, those bar girls are going to love me. Yeah, if you if you bring in 10 grand a week, hell, I love you. But I saw something on Facebook from a, a lady who's level-headed. She's a Filipino. She said this monkey pox, she said be prepared for a lockdown. And I started looking up this monkey pox because I had never heard of it. And it's all in the news in America and different places in the West. And it's very uh, contagious. But they haven't found any cases over here in the Philippines yet. The Omicron variant is spiking up over here. Okay, 
W Secrets to Success Vlog said, just my opinion, the best place to make money is in the U.S., period. Yeah, I would say to earn money because the only people who make money in the U.S. work at the U.S. Mint, W Secrets to Success. But I understand what you're saying. You're exactly right. I mean, why would you leave the number one place in all the world to earn money to come somewhere else where you don't know the laws, you don't know how to run business, you, you're, you're unprotected, you can't even own but 40% of the business. Uh, Hadden Shadow says if you start a business in the Philippines, try and make it so the revenue comes from selling the product or service to the outside world, bringing money into the Philippines. See, that's a great idea right there. See, now I would, you know, but who could do that? I mean, what, what type of product would you need to do that? If you can do something that the Filipino can't do or has or isn't doing, then why not? You know, if you want that work that comes along with owning a business, owning a business is not easy, man. It's hard work. That's, it's the reason why so many, I forgot, but the percent, 80% of what the small business associations say, 80% of new businesses are gone in the first five years or something. There's a reason for that. You don't have a good business plan. Hey, thank you, Clarence007, for the super chat. He said, just for you, bro, keep doing your thing. I appreciate it, man. I really do. Um, he says coconut oil can be sold outside the Philippines. But hell, how much coconut oil would you have to sell to make it profitable? Now, Iskandari TV, he's got something. See, he's doing something that the Filipino really can't do. He's offering a product, this uh, television app that he's got that I'm going to put in my guest house. 3,000 channels. You know, I got rid of my Netflix. And I'm not, uh, he doesn't pay me to do this or anything like that. But I'm just telling you, if you're going to do something like that, then offer something, a product like that, that um, that we need over here that the Philippines can't offer. And he's got a big market for it. Uh I don't know how to pronounce his name. Gurmal? Gurmay? Says, any advice for an African man working in the Philippines with an international organization looking for a genuine lady for a relationship? Yeah, I would say if somewhere in that international organization, there's probably other Filipinos. I would have them introduce you to somebody. Or just simply do it the old-fashioned way. Just walk up to somebody and introduce yourself and say, hey, you know, I'm Germany. How you doing? Filipino women, they, they fall for these corny lines, guys. Um, and you could do something. You could say something. I wish it's, I mean, I wish uh, Texas Azoy was on here. He's got some corny lines that he runs on women over here. But they're real innocent, man. And I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I tell guys this all the time. You're not going to get shot down like you do in America and the places. The Filipina is going to be basically apologizing to you if she doesn't like you or if she's already married or something like that. But that's the best way. Just introduce yourself. Uh, James Wright said, Calvin, do you recommend Dumaguete is a good spot? I hear a lot of foreigners start there and is there a beach there. The foreigners get along there for the most part. Yeah, uh, I like Dumaguete. I wouldn't live there, though, because of me. I don't go out or anything like that, but Dumaguete is a nice place. Phil Cooper, who was here last night, he lives up five hours north of uh, Manila. That's where his wife is from. I think it's Iloka Sur. And he said, and, and he looked around a lot more. He probably would have moved to Dumaguete. He really liked it there. It's a lot of foreigners there. You know, you can avoid them, though. I mean, it's not like they're, John said they were stumbling over each other, but it's not like that. 
you see a lot of foreigners. But yeah, Dumaguete is a nice place and the surrounding areas. You know, they've got Valencia, uh, Bacone, uh, Dowin, Zambonguita. Then you even got Sikki Hall, 35 minutes away. Bahal, an hour and a half away. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like Dumaguete. It's got a small town feel to it, even though it's got the big mall. It's got that port area that's just teeming with activity right there. It's got everything that a foreigner needs. Muchi Chi said Calvary means a business like, say, providing business services. Call centers are not competing with locals, so no one has reason to harm you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a perfect um idea and, and you know over here that you get a special visa if you start a business and you um hire 10 at least 10 filipinos full time they give you a a special type of visa i heard about it a long time ago but i heard but i asked my friend john smulo he's actually a businessman over here he owns a marketing service and then he owns a couple of restaurants he's an american from san francisco he said yeah calvin it's true if you uh, own a business and you're hiring at least 10 filipinos they'll give you that visa a lifetime visa by the way but he's married so he he's opting for the 13a okay yeah i had in the shadow said one can set up a trading firm and set up classes to train locals to do day trading for the accounts of international investors would have to set aside capital for generators and Starlink to be reliable. Yeah, there's a lot of startup costs in there. See, a lot of us don't have the money. Many of us are coming over here to get that free money from the Filipino government that I always tell you about. You you get a you get a pay raise the minute you get off the plane. You get a lifestyle upgrade. And a lot of us are happy with that. Because it's enough. We're trying to get away from the high cost of living over there, that inflation that Robert Dame was talking about today. And you do that when you get over here. Remember I gave you the example because some guy said, oh, they're not giving away free money. Quit telling people that. It is free. Uh, the same, okay, my rent in America was $900, okay? So I gave him an example of I've got $1,000, $900 for my rent, leaves me $100. I come over here, my rent was $170, okay? That's $830 I have now. The government over here gave me $730, free money in my pocket. And it just gets, and it goes higher the more I was spending over there. I'm the same man. By the way, see? So, yeah, it is free money they're giving. I'm not sure if it's in the United States. Iskandari, he wants to know if is your service available in the United States. Now, Robert Rosales says, uh, at Gourmet, Gourmet, I always wanted to work with an international organization. How can I? Got any advice? He says, my service can be used anywhere as long as you have internet and no VPN to use. Okay. See, he's on here. But yeah, see, he's got a business that Yeah, absolutely, Roy Jones. This is a fact. He said, you move to the Philippines, you get a stimulus check every month. That's the way I look at it. Man, I, people don't believe me, but I could bring Marilyn in here. She'll vouch for you. Before my YouTube channel or anything else, I was earning about 14, a little bit over 1400 a, a month. And I was taking care of six people, man. We live very good over there at that apartment before we moved here. Because it was the pandemic. You really couldn't go anywhere. I was spent my bills all together, food and everything was was less than eight hundred dollars per month. So you know, you do the math. I was saving about six hundred dollars per month. 
That's why when it came time to build this house, I had some money. I never been able to save money in the United States. Not me. <clears throat> oh, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. You don't even need that much. The Philippine Statistic Association, Clarence O7 says, I saw if you make 60000 U.S. dollars a year that puts you in the top 1% in the Philippines. That's great. Yeah, you don't even need that much. According to the Philippine Statistic Association, if you earn $3,808 per month or more in the Philippines, you're considered rich. And you can't argue that. You can take that $3,808 per month U.S. dollars and live anywhere in the Philippines. I mean, within reason. I mean, I know they got special errors, BGC and stuff like that, but I didn't say it. They said it. You're considered rich. If you came here, um, okay, I'm going to post your email. If you came here in San Carlos City, man, you live like a king off of that money. And San Carlos City is not some rinky-dink place. It's a really, really nice place. It just doesn't have a whole lot of nightlife, but everything else it has. It has beaches. You know, it has everything else. It's, it's close, in close proximity to a lot of other the places. Here's this Kandari TV's uh, email for anybody that's. Um, are you Yahoo or Gmail? I can't remember. Let me look real quick, guys. Hold on. I don't want to put the wrong. Because I just gave somebody his email the other day. Let me see. Okay. Let me put this up here. I'll tell you, okay. Oh, there. At Yahoo. Gordon V2001 at Yahoo. It's got Yahoo on there, man. Send me your other email then. This is the one I always send you that I correspond with you with right here. Do you have another Gmail? What up, Alpina R? He says, so is the Filipino going to expect you to pay for everything? I get they are poor, but they survived just fine before meeting their foreigner. Yeah, but I mean, when you talk about that, uh, Yusuf, you know, a woman can contribute more than money. It takes more than money to survive over here. She's going to do her part. But what you're going to do, you're going to come over here and you're going to build the life that you want. And you put her right in the middle of it if you decide that you're going to be with somebody. But, I mean, you know, you're not going to get up. Okay, if you expect the Filipino to pay 50% of your lifestyle, you're going to price yourself out of the market. There's so few women that's going to be able to do that over here. I'm sorry. Um, so, I mean, you got to be reasonable guys you know come on now don't bring that american thinking over here if you come over here and build a, i'm gonna live good anyway okay so the woman that i'm with is gonna live good it's i'm not gonna be keeping score this is what i'm saying is you know those days of keeping score are over man you know you you're gonna be responsible for your own happiness anyway Uh, the TV for me too. It's hello, is I'm going to see the Divide safe to live. I've been to Cebu City. I enjoy the place, but it started to look like San Diego, California. Zamboanga's nice, but it's the, the traffic is really starting to get bad there uh, because it's probably the worst use of land I've ever seen in my 58 years of living. They built a, a big, gigantic KCC mall right in the city proper, right on the main street. I mean, right on the street. 
right on the curb. It's one way in, one way out, and it's created just the worst traffic outside of Manila. And then to top that off, not even a kilometer away, they built a gigantic SM mall. And you figure that out. I mean, I didn't say it was the worst land use. A senator in the Philippines said it first. And he's right, though. It's terrible use of land, but as far as, uh, you know, I lived in Zambongong and all for 10 years. It was safe for me. It's had problems. It's ha it has problems because it's down by the uh, South Sulu Sea and where a lot of those extremists live. In Bazi land, Holo, Sulu, Tower, Tower, and like that. And it's even some bad guys in Zamboanga. You don't know who they are. But I've never had any problems there. The vow is totally different. It's a lot of foreigners there. It's a very, you know, I don't I don't say it's safe for anybody because I don't know you, the TV for me too. I don't know what you're into. It's safe for me. I love the vows clean man before i came to san carlos i think the vow was the cleanest city in the philippines it's one of the only cities in the philippines where you're going to see big gigantic garbage cans everywhere we were walking through santa mall today and it broke my heart man how much trash i saw out there and i'm like it, I, but i told merlin because we was walking this morning i said well where are the garbage cans I said, you know, people are going to throw the trash down where, where they lay. They're not going to carry it with them. I said, but it would make it a lot easier if you just put in a big place like that. You add three or four big garbage cans per square, you know, because it's, it's a lot of big squares over there. But there was trash everywhere today. And she said, if the powers to be saw that, they'd be real upset. Uh, Belize and Edwin said, Calvin, dating so many girls in the Philippines after a while is getting old. Guys, just find a girl that will be real and kind to you. I, I, I have to second that emotion, man. And the reason I'm going to say that is because if you do that, you're going to take your time and you're going to find one that's right for you. I mean, if you find the one that you really want, you know, you're going to look at other women, really. I mean, you're going to look at them, but only to build your appetite up. You know, jumping from woman to woman, I mean, what's the whole point of that? You do that, I guess, in the selection process. But after you really find one, you know, you become reasonable and you find a real good woman, man, what would be the purpose of doing that? Uh, Malibu Kent says, those malls are good for pea hunting yeah but it's kind of it's kind of tough to find a woman at the mall unless you're gonna try to talk to one of the workers there everybody else is putting on a show they got on their best clothes they're on their best behavior you know a lot of people there are self-conscious um I like the malls because it's a lot of eye candy there. See, when you find a woman that, you know, you're compatible with, see, like I have, see, Merlin turns me on. She's not a 10 to everybody else. But to me, where I am in my life right now, the 58-year-old man, she's all I could ever dream of, really. She don't give me any problems. You know, she's attractive. She's intelligent. She knows the right people in San Carlos City. She can get things done, man. So anything else is just eye candy to me. Anything else just builds up my appetite, and then I come home for supper. What's up, Gleason Baker? Thanks for joining us today. Um, he says, I'm just 54. I won't ride my bike. I want to ride my bike and watch the girls. My bar days, I left in Singapore, Thailand, and Australia. Yeah, that's a good plan because I do it all the time here. 
Peter Chapman says, trash management is a huge problem that I know is everywhere I go in the Philippines. You're right, not enough trash cans. And as the culture, they just don't care about any shows. Well, I wouldn't say that. I do know trash management. There's just not enough garbage cans. But if you come into St. Carl City, you'll see that the people really care. Man, this place is clean. It's as clean as any place in America, really. To be honest with you, I was just shocked because, you know, Saturday, now that the pandemic is, you know, the lockdowns, I'll put it like that, not the pandemic. The damn pandemic will be around forever. But now that the lockdowns are basically over, more and more people are coming out. And the Filipinos on Saturday and Sunday, they go to the park in bunches. And they hang out all day there. And, of course, they're going to eat and drink and stuff like that. And if you don't have any garbage cans, you're going to have garbage. Uh, uh, Bellis and Maryland fan. Yeah, you know, for me, man, I'm, I'm I'm 58, you know. She's really all I can handle for real, to be honest with you. Um, to be honest with you, man. But I don't see any, you know, now if you're, I've got a friend, he's 40. He's like me. When I came over, I was 45. He's 42. It's a different subject. He's, he's on the prowl. He's on the hunt. He's doing the selection process. He's got a woman that he's happy with, but he feels he's uh, missing out on something. And I don't blame him. You know, the only way you're going to know that is to go out there, take a chance on losing what you got. Uh, he says, uh, Felix Agbessi. Ag Bessie says, I'm in my early 60s. Is it easy to find nice ladies in the 40s or 50s today? Absolutely. You can put on a blindfold. There's so many over here for a lot of different reasons. Um, but remember, a 50 year old Filipina is old, man. Not just in her looks and her physical, but her mental, too, man. Filipinas, they start out so early with just immense responsibilities. Marilyn was 11 years old taking care of her sisters and brothers. Man, it's too young. When my daughters was 11, man, they were still playing with Barbie dolls and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, here's Philip Cooper. He said, what's up, Cal? Just getting over here to Elo Elo on the ferry. Uh, okay, which did you take the um, Fast Cat? Philip, because I, I meant to tell you this morning, but it slipped my mind. Because if you take that other ferry, it's going to take you somewhere else in Elo Elo. It's about it's about a two hour ferry ride. Uh, I love the child. Said my wife was twenty three when I turned forty. I was happy as a clown. Yeah, that's a perfect age, right there. Because when I was started coming over here, when I met my son's mother, I was 45. She was 24. You're talking about that's like a match made in heaven when you come over here, guys. If you're 45 and you meet a Philippine that's like 24 or something like that, it don't get any better than that. That's about as good of a match as you're going to get. You know, she's 24, 25, 26, something like that. Hey, Danny, what's up, man? He's over in the Philippines, man. He said, hey, Calvin, watching you with my lady Irene from here in the Bio City, Philippines. I'm going to tell you, and this is no joke, Danny. I'm as happy for you as I've been for anybody to be over here in the Philippines, man. I knew your struggle, man. And I tell you what, every time I talk about a long-distance relationship, they should put your picture in the dictionary because you've got a real relationship. That's a real long-distance relationship. And it's got to be painful, man. It's not a long-distance conversation. Man, when you hold that little tenderoni in your arms, man, for 30 days, and then you got to leave and go back home, man, come on. I'm going to put you in my Hall of Fame for going through that all the time. Because I couldn't. 
Uh, success. So if you built your woman in the Philippines, typically burned out by then. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that when you put the sun, you know, the sun beating down on them and she's just, oh, you know, if I was 60, I wouldn't be dating a 50-year-old woman. I'd be dating a 40-year-old woman or somebody less, somewhere between, okay, I met my friend Nick. I believe he said, I believe we're the same age, right? I think his girlfriend's like 26, but they don't look out of place. She might have been 27 or something like that. They came here to visit us. We went out to eat and stuff like that. I think she's 26 or something. He's He might be 60. But they just look like a normal couple to me. And they get along well. Now, if he jacked that up and went to somebody like 50, I don't know if he – I don't know if they get along as well. Hey, Phil Chase is sending love from D.C., Baltimore. Uh, quick way manufacturer said, what if you're 78? Oh, hell, I can beat that. My buddy over here, Sydney's 87. His girlfriend is what? Le younger than Merlin. She calls Merlin auntie. So I guess his girlfriend's 35. And now I'm talking about they're a real couple. There's nothing playing around. This woman's into Sydney. But Sydney, you know, he's not the typical 87-year-old. The women over here say he looks 60. And I got to agree with him. He looks about 63 or something like that. He said, Clarence, oh, seven, seven, 43. I found out when dating women above 35 from other countries, your race does not matter as much in my experience. Yeah, it really doesn't matter anyway over here. Did you, did I send you that money? Did you go get it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Philippines aren't that shallow, guys. Let me tell you something. Um, they want to know if you can take care of them. Are you a good man? That's what they want. Do people have preferences over here, clients? Yeah, we do. That's why I'm here, because I prefer Filipino women. All right? There's nothing wrong with that. But Filipinos in general, and you got to look at their history, all right, and how they were treated by the Spanish, by the Americans. And the... Um, the colonist, he always leaves something behind to the people that he colonized, the colonizers, rather. They always leave something behind, so they'll leave their discrimination and stuff like that behind. But in my humble opinion, man, I've been here on and off for 13 years. That's never been um, an issue, my color. It's never been an issue. As a matter of fact, it's been to my advantage. Because once I deal with a woman, then all her friends want a black man. That's just how it is. I'm just telling you, man. You know, there's been one lady that said, oh, I don't like black men. And guess what I told her? We don't like you either. It was just that simple, man. It just came out like that. Because I don't, I don't blame her for that. That's what she liked. Uh, Road to the Philippines and said, oh, LOL. I hit the damn on and off button. <laughs> I know, man, you got to be in heaven, Danny, right now, because you got to find a little woman, man. And to be away from that for two and a half years, man, that would drove me crazy, man. It, you know, and then you're only over here uh, for 30 days, man. I told you, don't focus on leaving. Just stress every day out and squeeze every second out. I told him, I said, drink till you drunk, eat till you sick. What did I say? Uh, about screwing. Did I say screw to your nuts hurt or something? I said something, man, you know. Uh, that girl dating Sydney should be arrested. Come on, Cal. No, uh-uh. Look on my community page. You'll see that that's her on there. She, what, she lifts weights. She works out. You know, Sydney hit the jackpot over here, man. And guess how they met? She's one of Merlin's friends at the gym. She came to Merlin's, you know, that party we had. And she just simply asked Merlin. She says, are any of these foreigners single? That's what she said. And Merlin said, yeah. And, you know, she told me, she said, why don't you tell Sydney that this woman over here wants to meet him? And hell, 
All I had to say was, <laughs> that's all I had to say. Sydney took it from there. Sydney ain't no joke, man. Yeah, Danny's boots on the ground right now. And I'm happy for him, man. I've never been so happy for somebody. Believe it or not, because he's a good guy, man. But he's stronger than me. Once I start coming over here, I never stayed gone more than two months. I couldn't do it. Uh, Belize and Evans said, so funny, Cal, in America, if you're 58 and trying to talk with a girl who's 25 years old, they call you a pervert. Yeah, because, man, we're extremists over there in a lot of ways. We're hypocrites in a lot of ways, Belize and Edwin, you know that. They're more natural over here. What two grown adults agree on is nobody's business. But, yeah, you're right about that, and that's why I'm over here, man. Because I ain't got time for that. Hey, the beach of life. Thanks for that. Super J said, bus fare for Danny to come into the live. Yeah. Um, I told Danny before he leaves because, as a matter of fact, no, nah, he, he may be gone by then. We're supposed to be in. Um, TJ Johnson is inviting us to Samal Island for about three days in July. So Danny may be gone by then. But I'm going to still try to hook up with you, Danny, um, before you leave. I, I got to see you, man. If I don't see nobody else that comes through here, I got to see you. I got to do it because he's got a uh, he's got a, a YouTube channel. It would be good for us to, like, interview each other because I got a lot of questions for him. <clears throat> And now that he's over here, it makes it even better. Hey, the TV, man. The TV for me, too. Thanks for that super sticker. Uh, Stephen Bear says, it looks like the Belize in heaven is holding a durian. I hear it smells like hell, but tastes like heaven. Yeah, the first time I came over here, man, the woman I was with, man, she went out and got, she didn't, you know, this is one of those things where you need to, don't catch me off guard. You need to let me know what's coming. Well, I don't know what I was doing, but she went downstairs and it was cut in half and she bought into the hotel room and that was it. I've never even thought about trying durian anymore, man. It stunk so bad. Uh, <laughs> Belize and Evan said, yeah, Steve, when I was in the Philippines when I took that picture. Yeah. I've never tried that, man. I mean, it, you cut that thing open. I don't know how it smells. He's holding it now. But you open that up, man. And I'm talking about it, it'll run you out of there. And she never, you know, gave me any warning or anything. Yeah, yeah. He says it's like a rotten, it smells like rotten meat. Yeah, it does, man. I tell you what's a good one over here. I like jackfruit because they, they use the jackfruit. You can either you eat it as a fruit or they use it as a meat substitute, man. And, and I'm going to tell you, man, if they didn't tell you there wasn't meat, you wouldn't know it. They put it in beans and different things, soups. Uh, Quickway Manufacturing says, is there a way to find a good person to chat with to help move to the Philippines? What do you mean? Um, what kind of help? do you need that's what this community is about just kind of put it out there are you talking about you're not going to have a problem finding a woman they're going to find you but everything else that's what we're here for Luis martinez said what it smells like yeah it smells like rotten meat or funky feet you ever smell somebody come in your house you know and you know what you're what somebody's feet smell like that they haven't washed their feet. Maybe they had them damp socks on for two or three days. My ex-American wife, her brother, her brother, my brother-in-law, my ex-brother-in-law, rest in peace. His name was Ronnie, man. He was a schizophrenic. And, you know, he would come to our house, man, and I'd take his shoes off, and it would just blow the roof off the damn house. That's what it smells like, Luis Martinez. It's that bad, and I'm not uh, exaggerating. 
But yeah, Bill, you're right. Impersonates pork, man. It's really good stuff, man. But then you can eat it. I guess it's in a different stage of of ripeness. I, guess. I hope I use the right word. Because as it gets old, it gets sweet, man. It's delicious. It's a fruit. But early on, you use it as a meat substitute. Uh, the TV for me, too, says, no problem. I watch you build your new home. Plus, help people every day. You earn that super chat. Take care. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And, and I mean that. Hey, Edwin Vega. He says, uh, from KC, Missouri. That's where Danny's from, as a matter of fact. And I only been there one time. I was on my way. Remember I told you I had a panic attack? I didn't get on the plane from uh, L.A. to Louisville, Kentucky. I caught the, uh, the Amtrak. It stopped in Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> no, John Gomez, it, it stinks like that, man. I'm not even trying to be funny. Ask anybody who's ever smelled that. Uh, you know, sometimes, have you ever uh, been, you know, making love with a woman? You tell her, do you, you want to do a doggy style? And then you smell her butt. That's what it smells like. And you'd be like, that's okay. Just turn on back over. You know, you don't say anything to her, but you're like, just turn back over. That's okay. And Warren D said, how many of you guys, pre-game before going to the Philippines the first time, meaning Tinder, Facebook, online chat. Yeah, probably everybody. If you're only going to be here for two weeks, I say, why not? You know, when I talk about, see, this is where I kind of confuse people, and I won't apologize. When I'm talking about stay off the dating sites, I mean, if you're looking for a serious relationship, because a lot of Joes are looking for serious relationships. But if you're just looking for fun and games, man, and you're talking about coming over here for two weeks and you want a friend with benefits, that's where they are. They're on the dating site. See? Um, but I mean, most of us, we're older. We're talking about staying over here. You know, I would say, you know, stay, stay away from those as, as much as you can. But if you're just going to come over here for two weeks on vacation to check the place out, why not? Have a young tenderoni with you, man. I mean, it's going to make your stay. I tell you what, it's going to make your stay go a whole lot faster, too. Because when I came over here, man, I met two women. That's the only two things I did right when I came to the Philippines. One was I flew into a Cebu. That was number one. And number two was I met two women. Because the first one, she looked different online. See, because... I started chatting maybe a day or two before I even came to the Philippines, only because I was in this chat room. And the guy said, don't go over to the Philippines unless you, you know, meet a woman first. Why go all the way over there? And he put up a couple of dating sites, Cebuanas.com, and I can't remember the other one. Because I had never been on a dating site before in my whole entire life until I started coming to the Philippines. Those only two things I did, man. My two weeks went so quick because the second woman, man, was just a drop dead gorgeous 41 year old um, that I probably would have stayed with until she put it in my mind. She said, what are you doing with me? She says, I'm too old. I'm like, well, I was 45. She was 41. You know, and I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, most foreigners that come over here, they usually end up with a young girl. And I never even thought about it because I didn't know anything about the Philippines. Okay. Remember, I'm bringing my Western thinking over here. I'm thinking, well, I'm 45. She's 41. That's a good match. She said, no. Most of them get with young women. So I go back to the United States, man. And I get back on the dating site. And that's all I start dealing with is young girls, man. And she was right. And man, but she was dropped dead gorgeous. And my two weeks went by so quick. I shed tears at the uh, airport, not because I was in love with her, but I was going to miss the Philippines, man. I was going to miss it. That's how much fun I had. Alpino, I said, yeah, I miss the Philippines. I'll be headed to Thailand in July. Then on the way back, I'm going to try to stop in the Philippines a few days before I head back. 
to the land of the big PX. Yeah, I would I would say um I wouldn't I wouldn't get on there too soon, man. And then when you do get on those dating sites, cut to the chase, man. You know, don't play no games. Find out really what's going on. It's, it's some things you can look for to let the woman know, to let you know if she's going to she gonna be willing to, to sign the unspoken agreement because that's what you want. You want somebody that's going to be willing to sign the unspoken agreement. If they're not going to sign that unspoken agreement, man, there's no sense in you even fooling with it. Edwin Vegas or Calvin, you may have thought you were in Kansas City. Kansas, that brings on panic attacks in some people. Now, I was in Kansas City. I was right across from this um, barbecue place, as a matter of fact. I didn't know the Kansas City, where I was, I guess where the train stopped, they got so many hills. You know, the streets go straight up, almost like in San Francisco. Hey, Saint Ozzy, thanks for that super sticker. Salvador Pacheco says, damn, I could live off the tips that I sent here alone. Now, uh, you some kind of hater or something? I don't know. I don't think you could, to be honest with you, because remember, YouTube's going to take their chunk. And this is just for people who want to support the channel. This is a way to support a channel, man. I was watching a football game during the playoffs. And this guy, all he was doing was doing the play-by-play, -play, basically. Because, you know, you can't see the game. He just was doing the... And you're talking about super chats because they know that's the way they support the guy. And you know, I'm talking about, man, you know, and I don't hate people for that, you know. But if you don't really understand the super chat and what it's all about, then you're going to look at it and be like tips and different things. I guess it's a way for people to support your channel. That's all. Hey, St. Oz, he says, hey, Calvin, loving your work from – Adelaide, Australia, hoping to be in Cebu in late June. Are you likely to be free for a cup for coffee then or on your visa one? No, I'll be in a uh, matter of fact, I'll be in Cebu in June because I've got to get my son um his passport renewed. But late June is when I'm gonna take my visa run. I'm just going to Guam and come back. But yeah, I I've got a I consider this guy my friend now. He's from Hamilton Island, Australia, but I think he's from Brisbane originally. Um, and he's a nice guy, man. His name is Mark. He bought him and his girlfriend. We went out to eat with them. Oh, okay, yeah, Calvin. I believe in Evans says I started going to the Philippines in 2007. I used to chat three days before I go to the Philippines. Yeah, that's all you need, really. Don't be playing around. Um, he said, yeah, we support the channel. Yeah, and I appreciate it, man. You know, um, Will Sutton, thanks for the super chat. He says, hey, Calvin, calling in the night here in the U.S. Peace, brother. Yeah, thank you, man. I got about 30 minutes left because it's Sunday. Excuse me. We got to go to the store. I've got, um, I'm inviting Vince Lawson over here. He's a guy, shipmate, Navy veteran. I'm a lot older than him from Augusta, Georgia. I'm inviting him to dinner tonight because I told him, man, quit eating out all the time. Come and get a good meal. What's up, Cal? I've got a friend, Philip Cooper. He's in Elo Elo. City right now, man. I, he's on his way to um, Barakai. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to try to get this beach of life. Believe it or not, I was talking to Fred Baldwin yesterday. He said, a Calvin, a show with you and Rudy and Guam will be a banger. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to sit Rudy down and pick his brain with uh, uh, Bitcoin and all that. Just 
his life over there, you know, because Rudy's a character, man. He said, what's up, Cal? Uh, he said, I think I'll throw my back out, Cal. You don't hurt yourself, man, because, you know, these women will make you hurt yourself over here. They will, man. I ain't going to lie. Uh, they will make you hurt yourself over here. It's like some of my mother's home cooking. She'll make you bite your fingers, man. These women over here, they'll make you hurt yourself. And that's a fact. Because I remember Merlin asked me before, she said, why are you so rough? He said, why are you do it so hard? I said, I'm trying to knock your damn uterus out. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, I am, Kevin. Sass, he said, are you going to meet up with Rudy and Guam? I, I'd like to. I'm definitely going to meet up with um, Fred Ball when he, I'll be his guest for a couple of days. Him and his beautiful wife, Lynn, they've invited me to go over there. Um, yeah, I'm serious, John. Now, why would she even ask me a question like that? Why am I doing it so hard? <laughs> I want to see, is there anything behind the uterus? Because it's funny, man. <laughs> uh, but, okay, Moochie, this is funny. You even bring this up. He said, Calvin, you got to get guys hurt with your recommended regimen of, of sex every day. Uh, but uh, she told me today, she said, well, what about every other day? Yeah, I'll take that, really. That ain't bad. It's been better than every other month that I was getting over in America. Uh, <laughs> imagine a woman said every other day, like that's a punishment. That's why I love Filipinos, man. Uh, Doug Carr said, well, guys, hamster wheel squeaking. Need to attend to it. Yeah, man. Don't you guys. Oh, wow. If y'all have to go to work on Sunday, man, y'all making big money. I know when I was. Um, Working at DuPont Chemicals, man, we get double, we get double pay on Sunday. You know, we had that union. I forget what union we were in, the chemical workers union or something. But yeah, we get double time on Sunday. Yeah, man, I'm not playing, man. They said information said Federal Blue Cross is accepted in the Philippines. Where where at uh Cal? What hospital? Trying to touch them tonsils, yeah. <laughs> they don't have a good gag reflex over here, but they'll try. Lisa everyone, what's up, man? Yeah. When you gonna come over? When you headed back? Jonathan Stanley said, how's the journey come and learn the language? I know you set the goal for a year. It starts out slow, man. But I can't say I'm making progress because I was standing in the grocery line the other day and I could actually knew what the lady was talking about. You get some bits and pieces because see Merlin all she's doing is writing down. She won't let me hard tutor of course. So she's writing and that's an easy way to do it because all the Messiah that I know the little that I know I learned it from Merlin because one day she just wrote down some stuff and then she told me how to pronounce it and what it meant. She wrote me down 10 things, and she did that. Uh, A.C. King says every other uh, decade. Yeah, it's better than every other decade, man. He said, John Shaw. Yeah, come on, man. This guest house, man, I'm going to do a, an update in the morning just because these guys have, man, they it's flown by these last couple of days. The windows are in. The lights are in, the toilet, the bathroom is finished. Even the counter is on today. Nothing is undone except you're going to see the space for the air conditioning. I might just wait to do that before I do my update. But come on, man. Royce, wait, wait, what Royce Smith says? I'm in Makati now. Did y'all feel the earthquake this morning? I didn't. 
Uh, CS says, so how long can I stay in the Philippines on tourist visa? 36 months consecutively. But you renewing, that first renewal is 30 days. And after that, because that'll give you, well, it's 29 days, really. It'll give you 59 days. Then it's one, two, or six months, up to 36 months. Then you leave for one um, day and come back and start it all over. You don't need any fancy um, SR, Visa, anything like that. You know, unless you're in the military, you can get that one for $1,500. Well, it's really going to cost you about $3,000, but it's really not easy. People are going through some problems. I would start it over there because there's some apostle problems that people are running into. Okay, Cal Denver says Elo, Elo Medical City. See, Elo, Elo is one of those places in uh, Expat Alley. They've got good health care there. Yeah. Road to the Philippines says, so Doug Carr, you know exactly what we have been going through. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got a spot, man. Once it's finished and it's complete and it's ready, all I'm going to do is put the directions on my community page on how to book it, man. You know, the, the match is two nights, but it's free. And then whatever we're eating, you can eat with us. We're going to show some of this Filipino hospitality to my visitors, man. Oh, yeah, come on, because we've got a daughter here. She's eight. And of course, Booby's 22. Okay, also. <laughs> King of Bling, Bible Force. And how much is that at your guest house for a night count? It's free, brother. It's free. Well, the the postel thing is they has to have something signed and verified and i've had a couple of people that said they're having problems with it one guy who's over here now and then the other guy he's in the states um i wish um cornelius mack was on here because he just got his srv well you never have two beds we'll put a mattress on the floor if you see my guest house it's not even that big. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, man, that'll be perfect, Danny, because I'm going to tell you something, man. We'll put together a couple. I'll put one video for my channel and one for yours. Uh, hell, you can sit in on the live with me. It'll be a blast, man. But yeah, come on through here, man, before you head back. But I don't even want to say that. Yeah, it's free, man. It's free. I mean, it's really going to be a luxury little place. I mean, I got fancy lights that... Now, this is her brother's idea, not mine. He put these fancy lights in the recess and it changed. You cut the light on, it goes from green to red to yellow to purple. Green, yeah. And then, you know, Merlin picked out like a little chandelier thing that lights up. And we put a light on the other side. It's really nice, man. St. Ozzy said, I know you've answered this before, but I'm a bit of an airhead. Are there hotels and Airbnbs around St. Carlos at all? Yeah, there's a... Depending on when you're coming, the only Airbnb worth staying in is supposed to open back up mid-July here. That's what she told me. It's called Joy's Place. It's not far from where I live. But they've got several hotels. They've got the Marwani, the Maria Wani, they call it Marwani, the Palau. They've got the YM Business Hotel. They've got the Eco Inn. They've got the Dragon Inn. It's owned by an American. I would recommend either the Marwani or the uh, YM Business Hotel. Because I was going to go to the Palau, but I asked the tricycle driver. I said, which one is better? 
He said the YM Business Hotel. He said because the rooms are bigger. And it turned out to be he was right. And the the standard deluxe room, their rooms are big. It was 1800 but I don't know why, but when I walked in, he said, we'll give it to you for 1400 I'm like, I didn't, I didn't ask him why. I said, okay. But it's real clean. It's real nice. It doesn't have a swimming pool. But the Marwani has a swimming pool. You can get in there. It's been real busy now. Hey, a uh, global... Globalismo black man. Thanks for that super sticker. He said, be nice to have a stripper pole under the lights. Oh, man, they was trying to do that on the boat, man. They got liquored up, man. Merle and all of them. You know, I was getting kind of jealous the way Marilyn was moving. I'm like, you're supposed to save that stuff for me. Jonathan S. has the language on him. Good mind, which means little or small. But I knew it was going to be a challenge. That's why I gave myself a year. Imagine, man, trying to learn a new language at 58 years old. But it's not impossible. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a Jolly Bee. There's a McDonald's here. Yeah, yeah, they love Jolly Bee. Jolly Bee's a big deal, man, uh, here. They're loyal to Jolly Bee all around the world. When they opened that second location in Chicago, I took my wife and son there. Man, we had to stand in line, I know, for two hours to, to get in. I mean, it wrapped around. They, it was like getting into a football game or something. Hey, globalismo black man, he, he says, you're welcome, the nitty-gritty legend. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Now, uh, it was her brother's idea. He come up with a lot of ideas, man, over here. He said, Cal trying to set the mood with those rotating lights. Oh, man, it's going to be nice when you guys get in there. Yeah, I love, I love the mango peach pie. I'm going to tell you why. Remember in the United States before McDonald's changed their recipe or the way they cooked their apple pies? Remember they deep fried them. They used to be crispy and hot and, and chewy on the inside. That's how they are here. They haven't changed them. So I think McDonald's got sued or something. And so they had to change it. Oh, you can park the van right in front of the one in front of my gate. I've got a big 50 square meter buffer out here, Cal, but any of that land out there, it's, it's like a big farm. Yeah, you can park it right there. Cal had a, I mean, not Cal, Bill Cooper, he hard a driver. See, you big money guys, you can do that over here. Now, he hard a driver in Dumaguete to bring him here and then on to Barakai. Then not only that, but the guys with him 24 hours, so Philip Cooper got him a room too. I'm like, wow, you guys got big money, man. When money's no object, why not? Uh, Warren D said, yacht parties can be epic. I don't want a slightly smaller boat, but definitely giving me some Miami vibes, man. Uh, uh, one of my subscribers wrote me today. He said, Calvin, I, I rented a boat like that. But he had 100 people because it was for his wife. Him and his wife, I think they got married, and then they came here and had the reception or something. He hired a band and everything. But, yeah, it was really nice. I mean, it was a once-in-a-lifetime uh, thing for the for me and for the Filipinos that were on there, man. They had a ball. I mean, really. Their Facebook is full of every woman and every Filipino that's on that boat. Their Facebook is full of pictures. It'll last a whole year. They'll never forget that. Hey, Jonathan S., thanks for that super sticker. He said, Calvin was the be some lawn furniture outside the house. Yeah, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to have a, a hammock, too. Because if you look, when you see, man, I got a lot of room now. We, we knocked down that little shack that they were keeping the materials in. It's spacious over here. 
we're on a 180 square meter lot. We're only using 54 square meters for the house. On the other side, on this side, which if you're looking at the house would be the east side, it's going to be mostly grass and plants and stuff. But on this side, it's going to be concrete. Yeah, he can sleep in the van if he wants. He definitely ain't sleeping in my house. <laughs> Road to the Philippines and said, all right, Cal, my birthday girl and I are heading out. She's 39 today. Later, brother. Okay, man, have a great time. So they're about the same age, her and Merlin. Merlin just turned 40. That's a good age, isn't it, Danny? That's a real good age. Yeah, I love the child said they used to be deep fried and lard. Yeah, I mean, but it was crispy. Now it's like they bake them or something. Because they don't, you know, they don't break. They just kind of like, they don't snap anymore. These ones in these mango peach pies, man, are delicious. But yeah, guys, I got about five minutes left. I want to thank everybody for your super chats, your super stickers, your thumbs up. All your support for Sunshine Shoulders, man. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have another get-together, meet and greet. I'm gonna, I may have one every month until for about the first six months till things get back uh, to normal. This time, I'm going I'm to a, I'm a invite more women, more single women, even though you know, it, it doesn't matter how many men because – I know that they want to meet single men. It was evident by what was going on at the, the first party. But it's going to be the same thing. Good food, good good drinks, and everything. We're getting ready to go to the store, to the grocery store and buy a few things. we got somebody coming over for dinner tonight. Uh, you're welcome, Malibu Ken. I appreciate you, man. Oh, uh, no. I, I got a small place, Cal. But, you know, it, it's our place. You know, it's our home. Hey, Jeffrey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'll be glad when you get over here, too. Jonathan said, love the sniff check. Yeah, yeah, LOL. Sometimes they are sniffing the bank account. So just as you say, take your time and don't let her meet you at the airport. Yeah, be humble students, guys. Yeah. But, yeah, they're going to give you the sniff test, man. Hey, Moochie T, thank y'all, man. I appreciate it. Help somebody today, man. If it's, I know it's late over there in America, man. But, you know, if you're on one of them late grocery runs, very ones are weed runs, man. You see somebody out there, help them, man. Not a day goes by, I don't help somebody over here, I promise you. I bought a lady yesterday morning, you know, it was a little, it was a lady and her kids and the fish guy was coming by and they sell these little bitty fish. You know, they mix them up in uh, scrambled eggs and some, sometimes they put them in batter and deep brown. I bought a half a kilo of that, man. She was happy, man. You know, just, I'm just being a bridge guy. Okay, man. Oh, it's all kind of stuff to do here. Send them all, Cal, is second to none, okay, when you get over here. There's plenty to do. We got an infinity swimming pool. We've got a regular swimming pool. Whatever it is they want to do. Hey, Louise, thank you, man. Take care, everybody. Well, let me play my theme song. I don't know what's going on. I'll try to uh, play it today, but it for some reason it didn't. It was connected to Bluetooth. I don't know who cut that off. Okay, there you go. Because I like to give my buddy Anthony Edwards his due, man. This guy, he really. Um, I did itself with this Sunshine Shoulder song. I always like to play it loud if I can. Mm 
Let's see. Take us out of here, Anthony. Boots on the ground. Sunshine, 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 sunshine